So the topic for this morning is the first session in counseling. And obviously the first session in counseling is very important, paramount importance. It is the time when the foundations of the relationship of a good therapeutic process are led. From the beginning, I would like to say that the main goal in the first session is creating the right rapport, the right atmosphere. The relationship is the most therapeutic tool from a human viewpoint. Of course, we always trust the supernatural divine resources that we have, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, etc., that we'll be referring to. But from a human viewpoint, the relationship with the counselor is in itself therapeutic. Even if you do nothing else, the fact that you provide a relationship is highly therapeutic. This is why we have to be carefully working out the details, the right atmosphere of the relationship. When I was specializing in psychiatry and I had to do a lot of psychotherapy, at, by that time there were about 175 schools of psychotherapy. That was in the early 80s. By now, I think there are about 1,700 schools of psychotherapy. So I felt lost in the jungle. And I remember my mentor, Professor Monty Barker, a fine Christian psychiatrist, made me read a book written by a specialist, Jerome Frank. And the whole thesis of the book was forget about names and techniques. Forget about names and techniques. The most therapeutic tool, the most important instrument in therapy, and that applies equally to counseling, is the relationship. So don't worry too much about studying counseling, but worry a lot about being a good relational counselor. Relationship is paramount in all the counseling process. Relationship contains most of the therapeutic forces. This is something we will be seeing time and again during this week. So once we've said this, there are three features that are important in this relationship that should be clear from the beginning, from the very first session. The first one is warmth. We'll be considering each one of them. Warmth. Trust. And third, understanding. These are the key features of the relationship. A therapeutic, a counseling relationship. So, this would be the framework, the background. These three pillars will determine a relationship 
a good relationship where thoughts, feelings and reactions will be expressed freely and lead to the fulfillment of the therapeutic goals. So this was the introduction. Never forget that if you want to be a good counsellor, the most important thing is a good relationship with the counsellee. A relationship whose hallmark is this threefold pillar. Now, let's start with the first question. Our first point is, how shall we start? How shall we start? In your outline, you've seen the question, what can I do for you? I would like to call your attention to the fact that the very first words both the counselee and ourselves, the counsellor, say are crucial, are vital, are extremely important. So let's start with ourselves. What is the first question we will ask? I always will always remember a girl came to me and she was very angry with a psychiatrist uh, working in the national health system. Psychiatrists working in the national health system have very short time to be with patients and they rush, they go very quickly. And uh, the psychiatrist, it was the first interview, and the psychiatrist, uh, without looking at her eyes, just asked her, what's happening to you? What's happening? What happens? And she just said nothing, stood up and left. <laughs> the three, four words we use in the very first question set the tone. A question I like to ask is, how can I help you? In which ways can I help you? Could you tell me? In which ways can I help you? Now, I would like you to divide in groups of three or four and think of three questions, three opening questions from the counselor that you think are appropriate, and three questions which are wrong and don't set the right tone. Is my question clear? Yes. So let's work on the opening question, because the opening question, the first five, six words, set the tone like in a symphony. Are you fond of music? Yes. The first uh, notes of a symphony are a summary of what will follow. You remember the ninth symphony of Beethoven, or the fifth? The first three, four, five seconds? In the three, four, five seconds, first seconds, you have a summary of all the symphony. Exactly the same happens in the counseling process. So it's very important how we start. We have to work carefully the very first words. Okay, so I think by now we have a good selection of opening questions from our part. But also the very first sentence, the very first words of the counselee are critically important. Usually the first sentence is a summary. First one or two sentences are a summary of the motivation, the deeds, and the goals the counselee has in mind. I usually write literally the two or three first sentences the counselee mentions because they are a reference point. This is how and where we started. 
this was your situation when we started. Then as the counseling process goes on, we can compare where are we now. So these two or three opening sentences from the counselee are very, very important. And even if you start writing down, which perhaps you are not used to doing it so soon in the interview, it's important at least that you remember them. Remember them and then afterwards write down, write them down. Because they will be our reference point. And they are a summary of the motivation and probably the purpose of the counselee. Is it clear so far? Yes. Yes. Can we start the counseling process? <laughs> okay. So this was the first point in your outline. What can I do for you? Pitfalls to avoid, some questions which are not helpful to start with, and words that help, some questions which are indeed helpful. Now, the second point, you will see it's a has to do with understanding. I feel that you understand me. By the end of the session, as we said, the purpose is to establish a good rapport. Is the main goal of the first session. Nothing else is more important. The priority is establishing a good Rapport. In this sense, warmth and empathy, setting an atmosphere of trust, are very important. How do we create an atmosphere of warmth and trust? What tools do we have? The most important tool we have is listening. Listening. Listening is probably one of the three most important tools we have in counseling. Along the week we'll be considering two other tools. <coughs> listening. Listening carefully. Listening attentively, listening without being in a haste, in a hurry, in haste. Now, I would like you to work again in these groups and ask you a simple but very important question. Why do people listen so badly, even counselors? <coughs> Why are we so bad listeners? What makes us bad listeners? What are the pitfalls? Why, if we know that listening is so important, why don't we listen carefully, attentively, etc.? Okay, let's devote the last minutes. To, especially to point three. But before that, still in point two, notice that listening a lot helps a lot. It helps the person feel understood. When the session gets to an end and the person says, thank you, I feel you understood me, I felt understood, this is one of the best comments that the counselee can tell. But don't feel discouraged if the person says, you don't understand me. Because very often, very often, the person goes for counselling not to hear ways out, but they want to get support for their views or projects or ideas. And if these projects or ideas or behaviors are morally wrong, 
and the counselor, we are talking about pastoral counseling, so you can be somehow directive. If this is wrong and you do not give support, the answer will be, you do not understand me. Which translated means, I feel that you are telling me you are not right. You are not right. So don't feel discouraged if they tell you, you don't understand me. Let's, let's move to point three. What is happening to me? Now, if possible, in the first interview, we should try to have an overall view, a rough portrait of the problem, of the situation. So we should be defining the basic needs or problems. Um, I would just mention a classification I use. This is just my personal one. You could make your own. This is very subjective. It's not, this is not the DSM-5, uh, the, the, the official classification. I find it helpful and useful. I find it helpful to divide the main problems and needs in, five, in four groups. First, those that are related with our identity. Who am I? This has to do with all our self-concept, self-image, self-esteem, but not in the modern sense of uh, self-esteem culture, but in the really biblical sense. Feeling loved by God, feeling loved by people, feelings of superiority, inferiority, all that has to do with our identity problems. The strong and the weak. Feeling strong, feeling weak. All that has to do with the thorns in our life that affect our image and our identity. Identity. Of course, these uh, categories can mix. Secondly, all that has to do with emotions. We call them emotional problems. Emotional problems. Here we would include, of course, depression, anxiety, loneliness, etc. Very often they are related. They make a cluster because when you have identity problems, they affect your emotions. So it's not isolated compartments. <coughs> Thirdly, problems that have to do primarily, basically at least Problem number one has to do with relationships. Relationship problems very, very often. This, is, this happens very often. Many people come to us for help because they have relationship problems. And finally, what I call, so this would be how we relate to others how we relate. This has to do with how we feel, the emotions, our feelings, our relationships. This has to do with who we are. And finally, what we could call, I like to call ethical problems, moral problems, how we live have to do with our behavior, ethical. <coughs> How we live, have to do with our lifestyle. Certainly here, we are talking about pastoral counseling. So here, anything related with sin, 
should be included. For me, I find it helpful from the very beginning to have a clear idea what is the primary problem. Because the primary problem will set the target. The primary pro problem will set the target. It will help us not to get diffused, rambling, walking around. So if, think, if possible, you should try in the first interview to define the primary problem. Identity, emotions, relationships, or behavior. I find it helpful. From that point onwards, we set the therapeutic goals.